Hey, your friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to hit on probably the question I received the most from Logic users. And that question is, is, hey, Chris, how do I split up my drummer track or my drum kit designer track or my third-party drum instrument track or even drum machine designer track so that I have not just a single track lane with a single channel strip to process and fine-tune the performance, but instead I have individual track lanes and channel strips for each drum element in that instrument. So a specific track lane and channel strip for just the kick drum and just the snare drum and just the cymbals and so on and so forth. So again, I receive this question constantly. So I really wanted to hit on all these scenarios for you in a dedicated video. So let's dig into it. Starting with drummer, let's just explore how to take the single drummer track and single drummer channel strip, if we take a look at the mixer, we only have a single channel strip for the SoCal kit using Kyle. How do we split this up from a single track lane and channel strip into multiple track lanes so you can process the individual drum elements separate from one another? Well, I'm sure we've all heard Kyle play a hundred times his rock-based performance style. Let's take a quick listen and a look at this channel strip and track lane and how it's all working together. So obviously, Kyle is working with Drum Kid Designer, and he's performing all these different elements of the drums, the kick, the snare, the cymbals, the toms, all of these elements on a single track lane and channel strip. And for a lot of folks, this might be enough. Maybe you don't want a million tracks of each drum element. And if you take a look at Drum Kid Designer itself, you can adjust the levels and the tonality of the individual drum elements within the instrument. If we click on the kick drum, we can obviously adjust the gain of the kick drum to be quieter or louder. And we can additionally dampen the kick. And adjust its tuning as well. And if you click on the drop down menu at the bottom of Drum Kit Designer, you can also adjust the levels of different percussion elements aside from the drum kit itself. But we're going to assume that you want to split up the drums into individual drum tracks so you can process, fine tune, export, whatever you need to do. To do that, we're going to close Drum Kit Designer and we're going to open the library. So let's go up here to the upper left hand corner to a button that looks like a drawer of a filing cabinet and that will open the library. Of course, at the moment, we're working with a rock based drum kit. This is Kyle playing his SoCal kit. Now, from here, if you scroll down to the bottom of the drum kit sounds in the library, you should see an option for producer kits. And the producer kits are basically track stacks that allow you to work with each drum element of that particular drum kit individually, exactly what we're shooting for. So keeping in mind, in this case, Kyle uses the SoCal kit. We're gonna look in the producer kits for the SoCal Plus kit. And obviously, if you're working with a different drummer or a different drum kit, you would choose that particular kit with the plus symbol after it. So we could see for every drum kit here in the library, there's a producer kit for that drum kit. Let's click on the SoCal Plus kit and pay special attention in the track lanes to what is about to happen. And look at that, we have our SoCal kit, but it's now a track stack that we can expand. And look at that, now the individual elements of this drum kit is split up into overheads, kick drum in and out, snare top and bottom, hi-hat, each of the individual toms, room microphones, leak that's captured by the individual mics across the kit, and percussion elements such as tambourine, shaker, hand claps, and a channel called punch. Let's close the library and take a look at the mixer. From here, we can process our individual drum elements separate from one another. We can open and close the track stack both in the tracks area and the mixer, and we can even solo specific elements as well. This is amazing because now you can work with your kit as granular as you need to. For example, maybe I wanna be able to add a little more bottom end to that kick drum. To do that, instead of placing an EQ on both the kick in and out, I'm actually going to create a summing stack within this track stack using Shift Command G. And now we can process the kick as a whole. And this is thanks to the new ability since 10.7.5 to be able to nest summing track stacks within summing track stacks. So let's solo the kick drum. 
and take a look at the EQ. And if you find yourself in a situation where you need to export the individual drum elements of your drum performances, it's so simple. You just select each track lane within your track stack and go up to file, go down to export, and we can export all 16 tracks as audio files. So I'll export these to my bounces folder and I'll just export as is. I'll bypass the effect plugins for now and let's just hit export. Great. And if we go to the finder, go to the desktop and go to my project. I have individual audio files for each of the hats, leak, overheads, and everything else in this track stack. I mean, how simple was that? Okay, let's move on to scenario number two where you're maybe not working with drummer or drum kit designer, but instead a third-party drum instrument. Of course, this will depend on your third-party drum instrument, but it should be pretty simple. Let's close this track stack for now, and we're going to right-click on the SoCal kit, and we're going to convert our drummer performance to a MIDI region by going to convert and converting to a MIDI region. I'm gonna go ahead and load a new software instrument. I'm gonna go ahead and choose drum kit designer. Even if you're working with a third-party instrument, the steps will still apply to your situation. You just might have to do some mapping within your third-party instrument. Cool, so let's create our track lane. Let's close the library. And let's bring our drummer performance as a MIDI region down to this new software instrument track lane. And let's get rid of the producer kit. Of course, because I'm using drum kit designer in this example, we could go right back into the library, go to producer kits, choose a kit to create a track stack with the individual elements. But if you're working with a third-party software instrument, of course, that's not a possibility for you. So instead, what we need to do is, is convert that instrument from stereo or mono to that of multi-output. So this really depends on your software instrument if it offers you a multi-output option. In this case, obviously, Drum Kit Designer affords us the ability to choose multi-output. At this point, it looks like nothing has changed. I mean, we still have only a single track lane. We don't have like a little drop-down menu that we can open and close. Our channel strip in the inspector looks like nothing has changed as well. But if we go into the mixer, we now have these two new buttons that allow us to either add individual output channels or subtract output channels. And all you do is, is you click on either the plus or the minus. So let's add some channels. Well, look at that. We now have a new output for this instance of Drum Kit Designer, and it's for the kick drum. If we click again, we now have an individual channel strip for just the snare and the toms, the hi-hats and percussion, and after that, extra auxiliaries if we need them. So I'm going to subtract aux five, six, and seven. This should afford us everything we need for this instance of Drum Kit Designer. And if we press return to go back to the beginning of our project and hit play, let's take a look at the different channel strips in the mixer. Cool, so everything we need is broken up across these channel strips, even though instrument two was silent at that moment, if we solo and listen again. The original instrument two channel strip covers our cymbal sounds. At this point, you could process these individual drum elements separate from one another once again, or if you need to be able to export these individual drum elements, let's select the first channel strip that's not available to us in the tracks area, hold shift, and then select the last channel strip, and then I'm going to right click or hold control and click and go to create new track for each of these channel strips that we don't have a track lane for yet in the tracks area. And look at that. We now have five track lanes and five channel strips for each of the drum elements of this drum kit designer instance. And once again, to export, we would select all five track lanes and go to file, go down to export, five tracks as audio files. Now, obviously with drum kit designer, it was super easy. All I really had to do was open a multi-output instance of drum kit designer and then click on the plus and minus buttons in the mixer to add output channels. But if you're using a third-party instrument, you're gonna probably have to do some routing within the instrument itself as well. So everything is being sent to the correct output channel that you create in Logic's mixer. 
I actually have another video dedicated to this idea using both Easy Drummer as well as Battery from Native Instruments, and I'll link to that in the description below. But this should get you set up pretty quickly, at least with Logic Pro's own multi-output instruments. One other thing worth noting about multi-output instruments is that your chosen instrument might limit you in terms of how many outputs you can create and send sounds to. In this case with DrumKit Designer, we have actually a combined channel for both hi-hats and percussion. So both hi-hats and percussion will be played through the single output and be exported to a single audio file. That may or may not be desirable in your particular case. You're really going to have to get familiar with routing audio in your multi-output third-party instruments. Lastly, let's explore drum machine designer instances and how to break up those performances as well. If we take a look at the Apple Loops browser, I'm going to click on the pattern loops option to narrow my search to pattern loops. And I'm going to take a look for the Atlanta crunk beat here and drag it into the empty area within the tracks area so it creates its own dedicated track lane for this instrument. Now take a look. We have this instance of the Atlanta kit. If we take a listen. And the handy thing about drum machine designer tracks is by default, they are track stacks. So if we pop open this track stack, we have individual track lanes for each of the different elements of this kit. And we can see that in the mixer as well. So the concern of being able to process or export the individual track lanes of this drum machine designer kit is already taken care of for us. We can process certain drum elements separate from one another. We can export all these drum elements as well just by selecting all the drum tracks within the track stack. Go to file again, go to export, 25 tracks as audio files. But perhaps you want to be able to split up this pattern loop right here so that each of the drum elements are on their own specified track lane. The great thing is, is that you can do exactly this. So let's select our pattern region and let's right click or hold control and click and go down to convert. And let's separate this pattern region by the kit piece. And look at that. We now have our kick drum living on the kick drum track lane, the snare living on its own dedicated track lanes, claps, hats, so on and so forth. And we can even adjust the performance in its own dedicated pattern region. So we could play around with the kick drum itself. Amazing. It really just takes a couple of clicks to be able to expand your drum performances so you can be as granular as you need to be in terms of processing, adjusting for performance, and exporting. So I hope today's video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel, Wide Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, widelogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, emails, or posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Take care.